So we're here with Walter Bosley. Um, he's an investigator of historical occult mysteries, author of pulp fiction novels, and a screenwriter who has appeared on History Channel's um, Ancient Aliens. He's also worked with the FBI and as a reserve officer for the US Air Force, serving as a special agent and has also worked as a counterterrorism operational consultant for six years. We're welcoming you to West Rockies and we're so glad to be able to sit here with you and chat about like the amazing things you've experienced and written about. So it's definitely an honor to be able to talk to you about these things. Um, your resume speaks for itself. Let's just start with um, one of the main things that you um, investigate and um, that's obviously secret space programs yes. and you suggest that there have actually been secret space programs um, in action that predate NASA and um, projects like Project Paperclip. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, what I do is I have taken the, the thread of the origin of the secret space program breakaway civilization concept. Um, when we when we speak of these things, we usually um, start with the World War II era, Nazi Germany, and we bring it into the post-war era and forward into the military industrial complex of our times. Um, what I have done is trace the thread of the origin of all this back to the mid-19th century. So I've kind of filled in the, uh, hopefully I've, I've tried to fill in the historical background that led to what Nazi Germany developed during the war that led to our modern zero space program. And how far back really does this go? Well, the evidence suggests that uh, German organizations were attempting to develop anti-gravity technology and playing around with this stuff as early as the 1850s, mm -hmm. you know, the decade before the American Civil War. And they were doing this in the United States and who knows where else. Um, most of this information, this original information comes to us from a German who lived in the United States and witnessed some of these um, airship experiments in California in the 1850s. And where do you stand in terms of how many of these occurrences are terrestrial, uh, man-made, and how many of them might be extraterrestrial, or is it just one or the other? Well, personally, I think um, both are true. There mm -hmm. are extraterrestrials, and they do come to this planet. They have come to this planet. I, I have no problem with that. Um, my personal view is that about 90% of what we call UFOs and what people record in the skies. About 90% of that I think is human technology uh, classified. Now I'm talking about the truly unidentifiable ones, okay? Um, I would say 90% of those are, are human classified technology of different governments or unknown technology that's being developed by private groups. And that still, you know, leaves a margin of about 10% in my opinion, which is extraterrestrial or possibly interdimensional. You briefly mentioned a book to us that you um, wrote um, from your father's um, memoirs, I guess. It's, uh, his experience. Yeah, in the his, yes. his experiences. Tell us a bit about that. <laughs> my latest book, Shimmering Light, um, for about 40 years, my dad would tell me the same story about when he was in the Air Force being part of a retrieval operation in 1958. And as part of that operation, he and the group he worked with had to be briefed on Roswell, which had occurred 11 years earlier. Now, he insisted that his briefing at Wright-Patterson uh, demonstrated that these were human beings. These were not extraterrestrials that crashed and were retrieved at Roswell. But the interesting thing is, he said that he was briefed that this craft was from a human civilization, which is parallel to ours, but lives in the subterranean realms of this planet and that they're thousands of years old. Now, that in itself is just as amazing as the extraterrestrial story and I heard this for 40 years and after he passed away a few years ago, I you know, decided I really needed to dig into this. And when I started investigating, what I found was that in 1958 when he says this happened and he was told all this, this was surrounded by an historical context that included Operation Paperclip and MKUltra. 
and I further found out that the U.S. Air Force was very keenly enthused and involved with MK Ultra. And um, the reason my dad got involved with this is because he was specifically in the Aviation Medicine Command, and he was cleared for space program work because his unit did ground tests on pressure suits and spacesuits that would eventually, you know, go out into orbit and such. And he was exposed to the Air Force MK Ultra Sciences and such like that. And that's really what the book is about: is I'm presenting my dad's story, I'm presenting the historical context and the multiple possibilities of what, you know, this incident in Arizona and Roswell could actually have been, if not his version. That's truly incredible. And I'd like to know, you know, during your periods of um, time working with the FBI and the US Air Force, a special agent, uh, or what's the craziest sort of thing you, you saw or discovered or learned? <laughs> I guess I would have to say that as, as a counterintelligence agent for the Air Force when I was in, a big part of my job was uh, providing um, uh, support for program protection needs. Mm -hmm. Now, program protection means the uh, technology programs either done by the corporate contractors or the Air Force engineers, they would need counterintelligence support. So in order for you to protect these programs from spies, you have to be briefed in to a certain level of what it is you're protecting, right? Because you have to know what the spies will be going after. So I had a fairly respectable clearance and access. So I was briefed on uh, you know, a certain level of technology and what I saw um, to a degree explained a lot of the, the questions I had about certain UFOs. So it convinced me that uh, the U.S. Air Force has a manned space program and has had one for decades. So I, I guess, you know, it's the um, indirect things that kind of corroborated that idea, you know, when I was in. That and certain things under perception management, which, you know, are, are, were, were uh, I should say, reflected upon my research and my dad's story. My experience with things like perception management gave me an insight when I looked into my dad's story. Where can people find you online? Um, where can they go to find out more about you and support what you're doing? Oh, great. Uh, I have an author page at Amazon. And on the bio, you can find links to my blogs. And you can reach me through those links on my blogs. And I have the Walter Bosley channel on YouTube. And my books are on Kindle at Amazon and print on demand at lulu.com. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I did. He's a friend of mine. <laughs>